Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control systems topics and we continue with the determination of a transfer function from a given body plot or body diagram and this is our example number three so what we have is the following we have the body diagram or body plot given of a system which is shown here for the magnitude and for the phase and we would like to know as we did also in the previous examples determine the transfer function of the system using the Bode plot. Okay, uh, let me zoom in in this region again. So because that is uh, for us uh, important. So let me make a full screen of that. All right. What do we recognize? Again, we have a DC gain. So at very low frequencies, we see that our gain is approximately 40 dB or maybe very close to 40 dB. So we will say that this DC gain is 40 dB and we will, of course, convert this to the scalar value. What we also see is that the gain will decrease or start to decrease at some frequency around here. We don't know yet what it is, but we will start, uh, we will uh, make the asymptotic lines and we will make a, a very accurate estimate of that. This gain will decrease at this frequency, but it starts to decrease even faster. The steep will, the slope will be even uh, decrease even faster at another frequency around here. So as you can see, the slope is now even more negative, and then it will a little bit catch up. So it will stay, uh, it will make the slope a little bit less negative. So I suggest, well, I suspect actually that this is a pole. So that causes, of course, the gain to decrease. And this is another pole. So we have a pole and then another pole, second pole. And this is a zero because that causes the gain to increase. Okay, let's, uh, let's verify this with the phase plot also. Now, at very low frequencies, what you see that the gain is 40 dB. But the phase is not zero radians per second. I mean, uh, ra uh, zero degrees. So what you have is there is a phase inversion. You can already see that. So at zero uh, radians per second approximately, which is for this case is 10 to the power minus two, but at approximately at DC, we will have a minus 180 degrees phase shift. That means that the DC gain will be a, has a minus sign. So there is a inversion, a sign inversion in the gain. What you also see that the phase is increasing actually when you approach the pole. This is actually what we, uh, that is actually the contradiction of what we said before, because we said the pole will cause the phase to decrease, will be more negative. So what's happening here? So what's actually happening here is that we have a non-minimum pole. That means if you have a pole which is non-minimum, which is, but means actually that you have a pole at the right half plane of your complex plane, that will cause the phase to be positive. So what you have is actually that you have a positive phase. So we have to insert this also in our uh, transfer function. This will be done shortly when we set up our transfer function. But we, already, we can already recognize that the phase is now positive for a pole. Now for this pole around here, the phase will be negative because it will cause the phase to be negative. Like you can already see this because this will increase in phase. But when you approach this uh, value of the second pole, the phase will now decrease. So I can now assume that this is not a non-minimum phase pole. It is just an uh, ordinary pole we are also used to work with in the previous examples. And we have a zero here because the gain will, uh, of course, the slope will be, of course, will be less negative, and that will, of course, cause a positive phase in general. And that is also what we see from this phase plot. What you also see now is that the ma uh, the phase will be begin at minus 180 degrees, and it will approach for very high frequencies at infinity asymptotically the minus 90 degrees. And that also confirms that we have two poles and one zero for each. Uh, Pole, you will have an addition of uh, minus 90 degrees and you will of course have for each zero plus 90 degrees but since we have a phase inversion that causes actually the 
phase to start at minus 180 degrees so it's actually really important to consider that here otherwise you should start, you should start here at zero degrees and this will of course shift at the same at the sa uh, in the same manner to plus 90 degrees so that is very really important to consider that in more detail already before you start analysis this uh, an analyzing this uh, body plot Okay, now let's set up our asymptotic lines for determining a transfer function. First, we just start with again with the horizontal line for our DC gain. So in the next uh, step, we will place a horizontal line as shown here. So we have the red line. We will use that, of course, for our break frequency. So what you see is there is a red line, which is approximately at 40 dB. And we have now our first asymptotic line. If I now move to the second asymptotic line, which is which is now placed here as a tangent line in this region, which will be this blue line. So I have now placed a uh, really uh, close to a tangent line at this region, and that will cause now intersection between this red line and this blue line, and that will cause a pole around 10 to the power zero, which is just one radius per second. So the first pole is at one radius per second. Now, if I, of course, now check at this region, so I have to again place another tangent line, or in, if I can make a tangent line, I can, of course, make a, a tangent line or a line at the settle point of that region. So I did the first one, the, this, uh, the next line will be this, the green line. So again, you have a tangent line for this region, which is now, which will now make an intersection at this frequency, which is around 10 to the power 1, which is just 10 radians per second. So what we have is the first pole is here, and the second pole is there, 10 to the power 1. Now, I will now make a tangent line for this last part of this graph, so that will be the next line, that will be the orange line, so we will have an orange line, it will now intersect with this green line, and it is around 10 to the power 2. So it's just 100. So we have a zero at 100 radians per second. We have a pole, ordinary pole, at 10 radians per second. And we have a non-minimum phase pole at 10 to the power 0 or 1 radians per second. This is, of course, non-minimum phase because the phase is now increasing due to this pole. That is actually very important to consider. Okay, let's now move to the transfer function using this data. So we have this uh, pole, we have this pole, and we have this zero, and we have also our DC gain. And we will use these data to set up our transfer function. So let's move on to the next step. What we have at DC, let's write down again. We have at DC the following. We have a gain of 40 dB. Of course, this will be written down in scalar form 10 to the power 40 divided by 20 and this will result in 10 to the power 2 but the phase is minus 180 degrees now this will of course then result that the dc gain is not 100 but the minus 100 we have now discussed this so this will result that the dc gain kdc will be minus 10 to the power 2 or minus 100. Okay, now let's look at the break frequencies. We have now the break frequency for the pole and the break frequency for the second pole and we have a break frequency for the zero, zero. So let me designate this also in the plot. So we have the omega P1 here, omega P2 here and omega Z here. Okay, so we have now the break frequencies okay let's move on and let me write it down in black so if i now move on i can say this is now 10 to the power zero radians per second which is just one radians per second but this is as we discussed earlier this is a non-minimum non minimum phase pole 
no minimum phase pool because it is contributing a positive phase. Okay, the next one is 10 to the power 1 radians per second. And that will result in 10 radians per second. And they're just an uh, ordinary pool, so it is a minimum phase pool. And the zero is at 10 to the power 2, which is just 100. So it's just 100 radians per second. Okay, now I have now the necessary elements to set up my transfer function. What was our transfer function? What is the general form, form of that? This is GS is equal to the KDC times the product of the poles in the numerator. So it, I mean the zeros in the numerator. So it is S divided by the omega Z. We have again just one zero. So it is just that. And we have two poles. So we can make the template. And we have now S divided by the omega P1. And now we have to be very careful. It is not divided by omega P1, but it's just minus omega P1. Why? Because that is a non-minimum phase pole. So if it is a non-minimum phase pole, this is not a positive anymore, but a negative. And this will stay plus one. And we have an S divided by the omega P2, that is just an ordinary pearl, so that's actually the same as before. Now, let's uh, substitute the values here. So what we have, we have now here, is equal to minus 10 to the power 2 times S divided by uh, 100 for the, pole, for the 0 plus 1. So that's for the first case. And for the zero, we have the S divided by minus one plus one. And then S divided by 10 plus one. Okay, now we can now simplify this. This is, of course, what we already always wanted to have is isolate the parameter S such that you have S plus a constant value. So this is okay, this is minus s plus 1, so we can of course get rid of this minus sign by multiplying the denominator and the numerator by minus 1. So we have to get rid of this 10, we have to get rid of this 100. So let's start with the, uh, with the value of 10. So what we have is s, gs is equal to, so it is minus 10 to power 2, times s divided by 10 plus 10 because you will now multiply the denominator by the 10 and also the denominator by 10 this will be minus s plus 1 and this will be s plus 10 so you have now the first step you multiply the denominator numerator and denominator by just 10. So this will be of course 10 and this will be 10 over 100 this is just 1 over 10. Now this is okay. This form is what we want. This is still not okay but we can really easily change it to a, minus, a plus sign by multiplying numerator and denominator by minus 1. And you have now to get rid of this also. So you have also get rid of this 100 here. I mean 10 here. So what you can do is you can multiply this by 10 and also this these two terms by 10 and i will leave that 10 out in outside because this is already okay and this is just a minus sign in the final step so i don't need that 10 in the bracket so what we have is the following i will have minus 10 to the power 2 times s plus 10 times 10 just 100 for our zero and then this is on minus s plus 1 and this will be s plus 10 and then just times 10. Okay, now I want to of course get also uh, get rid of this minus sign here so I will now multiply the denominator and the numerator by minus 1. If I do that here I, I will of course screw up this uh, form so I will multiply this gain. So if I multiply this gain by minus 1 this will be plus 100 and this will be plus s minus 1 and I can see also there is a 10 here so I can divide out that 100 
by 10. So I will have just 10. So in the final form, if I do two steps at once, so I can do minus one, I multiply by minus one, the denominator and the numerator. And I also uh, uh, make sure that this minus one will be used here and divided by the 10. So I will get the following. This 10 to the power one of just 10, and then s plus 100 divided by s minus one. And you can see directly that this is just a minimum phase or non-minimum phase pole. And you have a s plus 10. And this is just the exact same expression as shown here. This is mathematically equivalent. So we have now determined our transfer function.